Hola, audience. It's Saturday, so that means today I am going to talk to you about an episode of a superhero cartoon. Today I will be talking about an episode of Batman the Animated Series titled It's Never Too Late. This episode shows that there's a mob war going on in Gotham between Rupert Thorne, who we've seen before, and a gangster we have not seen, Arnold Stromwell. Stromwell's son has gone missing, so Stromwell wants to meet with Thorne to figure out where his son is, but he also doesn't want to lose his position as one of the top gangsters in Gotham. Thorne then tries to kill Stromwell a couple of times. Batman intervenes and is trying to get Stromwell to end the mob war and go to the police to make it all stop. This episode is one of the better ones I've seen, if I'm being honest. It is kind of similar to Be a Clown in that Batman is not the central focus of this episode. Where Be a Clown mainly focused on Jordan and his character arc, this episode mostly focuses on Stromwell. But I actually find Stromwell to be more sympathetic than Jordan, even though he's a gangster who isn't exactly a great person. I think one thing this episode has over Be a Clown is that Batman feels more like a presence here than he did there. And yet, I don't ever feel like he gets in the way of Stromwell's story. He's in the episode when he needs to be, but he isn't overly present. If you recall, when I talked about the episode POV, I mentioned that it seemed like the episode was trying to put Batman almost entirely in the background as a sort of force of nature that the main characters reacted to, rather than a character himself. In my opinion, this episode works better than POV because it's consistent with how much Batman is in the episode. It doesn't start with him barely in it, and then in the end, he is all over the place. I do like that we get to see another one of Bruce Wayne's non-Batman disguises, which I do love seeing, since I don't ever get to see those in the movies, and I don't really get to see them in the comics anymore either. One thing I found a little suspicious about this episode was how we got to see the humanization of Arnold Stromwell. At first, he's more or less despicable, but he does seem to love his missing son, and he cares about where his son is. And then we find out it was Stromwell's own drugs that put his son in the hospital. And you would think, with how he's reacted to his son going missing, that he'd pretty willingly change his ways and stop what he's done right then and there. But he tries to kill the Batman, and it actually takes a visit from his brother to sober him up and make him change who he is. The brother, we find out, used to be pretty close to Arnold, and then one day when they were both young boys, they were playing in the railroads and a train was coming. Mike, Arnold's brother, pushed Arnold out of the way, and we find out he lost his leg because of that. This, combined with Stromwell's son being sick, thanks to Stromwell's drugs, makes Stromwell very sympathetic to me. But at the same time, I do find it troublesome that Stromwell's own son, who he loves very much, isn't enough to pull him into sanity, but then seeing his brother again is. I guess this means that Stromwell loves his brother more than his own son? There's really no easy way to do this, I don't think. Stromwell finds out about his son about halfway into the episode, so unless you prolong that to the end of the episode, it kind of just makes Stromwell seem like he doesn't care about his son as much as he lets on. I also find it very difficult to buy that Rupert Thorne is still a presence in the mob scene after Batman was able to get all of Thorne's files in the Two-Face episode. This all comes back to how the episode was meant to be viewed when it was being created. I really think the people making the show wanted there to be more of a storyline going through the series, while the networks didn't seem to care about that, and so episodes would air out of order, with little thought going into things that had happened in previous episodes. In this case, Thorne really should have been put away after the events of Two-Face. And if he's still free on the streets, then that means that Batman failed Harvey even more than just letting him become Two-Face by letting this monster loose on the streets when he has information that could put Thorne away. Overall, I think this episode is very touching, and in the short span of 20 minutes, I come to care about Stromwell despite all he's done and despite his character arc playing in a way that makes me question how it was delivered. And I do find it problematic that Thorne is here too soon after he should have been put away for a while in the Two-Face episode. But I am more or less able to ignore that. I think this would have been fine if Thorne had shown up maybe five episodes after Two-Face, but immediately it just doesn't work for me. But I cannot say enough good things about an episode that makes me care so much about the characters, even when it's maybe not done as well as it could have been. 
Overall, I know I don't have much to say about this episode, but I think that's almost good, since it doesn't mean that I will be sitting here for 10 minutes complaining about things that this episode did wrong. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, I hope you will like, share, comment, and subscribe. Next week, I will be talking about an episode of the Legion of Superheroes cartoon, and the week after that, I will be covering another episode of Batman. Until then, I hope you will keep coming back to my channel for more videos. I'll see you later. Have a great day.